thanks to everybody for joining my presentation here about SimCityization of New York City, which is a cooler way of talking about data normalization, which I think is the basis of said fun idea. Yes. My name is Devin Balkind. I'm a software producer. So I basically organize teams to deliver solutions, software solutions for startups, nonprofits, every now and then the occasional government entity. I work through Serapis as a nonprofit entity. I have a business called Proven, and I've, I have in the past worked for Beta NYC as a contractor. I was born and raised in New York City, and I just want to see New York City be the best place ever. We're constantly ranked the world's favorite city. We're the richest city in the richest country in the world, and we pay more. We pay a lot of taxes. We don't get the best outcomes for that money. There's benchmark after benchmark uh, survey, you know, shows that to be the case. Um, so even though to, you know, to billions of people around the world, you know, we represent the concept of urban life, a global city, a melting pot, diversity, immigration opportunity, all this stuff, we have to do better to show them that yes, like large city municipal life in America and in the world, like works, it's great. And we need a great government to do that. And so we've seen kind of government digitally powered government reform organizations emerge around the other great examples all over. Moda is one of the shining examples in New York city government. One of the few shiny examples in New York City government of this digital service organization style model for bringing open source and open data and centering open source and open data as the solution to government reform challenges. And so at WeGov, we're a volunteer run nonprofit project, right? Trying to make New York City the best run city in the world. And we, I do this as a volunteer. This is not my day job. And we build open source software and data projects that hopefully show better practices and inspire people to make cool stuff. That makes New York City great. And so the prime I'm interested in and other people that I work with are interested mostly in open source government, open government, effective government, participatory government decision making. Over the last four years, we built maybe a dozen experimental apps. And through that process, we realized that the key to sustainability is to have a steady stream of up to date, normalized data so that we could make basically so that we can scale better products as opposed to making cool things every now and then. And that's why we created the data book, which is what we're going to talk about here. And at the end of the, and the data book leads to the integrated SimCity for New York City concept. It is not, although it should be linked to this digital twin concept that's emerged and become quite popular around the world, which I'm slowly getting into another, other work interest zones, but that's not exactly what we've got here. So the idea is how do you make people engage with the city? It is not community board meetings, unfortunately, in my opinion, but rather it is what have been proven to be extremely effective interfaces for people viewing and manipulating real-time city data. And SimCity did a great job doing this. SimCity 1, 2000, 3000, 4. <laughs> now I think City Skylines, the game that, that is doing this better. What does that mean like from a game-based perspective? From a game-based perspective, we're talking about citizen-driven budgets, not participatory budgeting where you can pick a, pro a project or two for your district, but what are your, but what citizen-driven budgets where you get to make, you get to pull the sliders and say, I want more education and health. I want less police. If I have to raise taxes or lower taxes to get the things I want, then I want to see what that looks like in real time. Decision points which are opportunities where like someone needs to make, the city needs to make a decision, delivering a summary of that, allowing people to have an up down vote, even if it just as a feedback mechanism. So people understand decision points coming up. Here's a summary. Here's more information. What do you think? Data maps, which is something that I'd say is probably the most advanced one of these concepts, it's something that we're, we are receiving. We're getting a lot of good GIS layers and geospatial awareness, which is more on the digital twin side. But if we wanted to do this type of thing, the first thing and understanding that we have, and to Moda's credit, delivered us over 3,000 data sets of open data. What do we need to do? If you look through that open data, you'll notice, and, you're, and, and you build apps, if you, and you build apps, you'll notice this data isn't normalized. And if the data is not normalized, that means that while we have access to 3,000 interesting data tables, or rather maybe just 3,000 data tables, to actually connect those data tables together creates a significant upfront, there's a significant upfront cost. And we're definitely going to have to do that work if we want to, if we want to access, the, if we want to get the ability to deliver these types of interfaces that are actually going to engage people and make the government more transparent. And so just looking, so a good example, and this is from the Scouts at Scout app by a data clinic, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Long story short. If you want to find the agency column in New York City open data sets, there are 10 different, you can see th this is showing you what the column names are. If you search the agency for an agency column, 
So sometimes in the data set, an agency column is called agency. Sometimes it's agency name. Sometimes it's all caps. Sometimes it's an agency code and not a name. Sometimes it's issuing agency, blah, blah, blah. So you have all these different column headers, which means that until you've normalized that column header, you can't actually see a list of, you can't collate data based on agency. Then, as you can imagine, how about the agency names? So every data set uses a different, let's say there's multiple schemas and inconsistencies in how agencies are described within city open data. Same thing with council districts, same thing with community districts. When you don't have, this is a classic normalization problem. And it, because of that, it's also a classic normalization solution, which is that we have to establish UID indexes that enable us to connect this data together. We have to build a data pipeline that applies those UIDs to these open data sets so that people can build complex apps right off the bat and we publish those normalized data sets for public use. And so this is what we do. We built a normalization tool to do this. Basically what the tool allows us to do is update these data sets automatically. It doesn't, we can add new data sets without needing like complicated software developers. We use, it generates Google Sheets. I could go over that tool more, but basically it generates a Google Sheet for every data set, it allows us to manually connect ACS to the Administration for Children's Service record, which then will, then when the transformer kicks in, applies that new column to the data set immediately. And then, so we can add new data sets through an interface. We can republish those data sets with these normalized columns. We normalize, we normalize for agency name. We normalize for city council, community district, city council district, community district neighborhood tabulation, or also ta normalizing civil service codes, which is a bit of a different kind of normalization use case. But yeah, this is how it works. Basically, we have an Airtable data repository that is our court index, and we log interesting data sets there. Almost all of them are out of the New York City open data portal, the Socrata open data portal. Then we have our little custom transformer app, which sits in an Amazon EC2, where it does this generating a these like Google Sheet templates, basically our matching system. We publish we that transformer every time a data set is updated, thanks to actually work that Chris Wong did, identifying when data sets are updated in the open data portal. That triggers us rerunning this transformer. We republish that data on an air table that you can find on a website and should probably be more easily findable. Stuff's hard. So we republish that data into a public air table. We upload that data into, currently it goes into a Cardo, although we're switching to our own custom API database, but basically it uploads to a Cardo just to access the Cardo SQL API. And then we build apps on top of that, that SQL API. And then that's what I'm going to go into now, which is talking about the apps. But first, if anyone has any questions at this point, I'm realizing that I'm not sure I did that. I'm looking at the right chat screen. Has anyone chatted any of them? No. Yes. Oh, no questions in chat yet. Okay, no questions. Okay, yeah, the, 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 I'll share the presentation. Oh, here's a quick question. Can you short, Can you share a sortable link? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we have a notion that as all of the depth data that I can share, but if you go to wegov.nyc and there's a get involved, that will connect you into the notion where all this stuff is, including more information about this, including this presentation. But I will also make sure that I have that. All right being covered, of course, here we are. Uh, I'll make sure, I'll make sure it goes out. In fact, yes, I'll make sure it goes out. Okay. So yes, you, I will, I'll definitely share that air table and the presentation link with the list I have your list. So I'll, I'll send that out. Okay. So what we've done. Okay. So now we've got, at this point, we have 28 data sets that we've gone through. We've worked through this transformer process that we've normalized. And so once we did that, we thought, okay, what do we do? And basically we built kind of apps on top of it. I call them sections because they're all part of one app called the data book, which is a Laravel PHP application using a bunch of like kind of standard open source components to give you a directory. So I'll go through those sections real quick and then we can click around live. But basically we have organization profiles. So that's like the core concept of data book is that we want to be able to, I want to be able to say, I want to see all information related to the administration for children's services. And I want to see it in a way that makes sense to me. And so for me, I want to see a profile for that organization. I want to see some like summary roll-ups about like how many people they have, what their budget is. I want to see their description, their social media links, events related to them, et cetera. We deliver that. So we have that. Actually, maybe let me do it. Let me show a live version because that's always more fun. So let's go to organizations here. Okay. So looking at, so these are all the city organizations that we've identified through the open data sets. We also created, I would call it painstakingly, but actually it was pretty fun. We recreated the city's organization chart, which was five years old, but 
They said, we recreated the city's organization chart and we're still waiting for the ads administration to release a new one. Maybe he has, I haven't seen it, but we'll update this for when that happens. But basically here's an org chart. All of this is live data insofar as you can move about it and you can click on stuff. So I'm always a fan of, so we have data. So basically we have data for everything that's not great. We have data. So some in the org chart are like key people and not are key people and not organizations, but I always like the administration for children's services for demos because it's a interesting organization. And so here we are. Okay. So we can see here, although they don't have that, they don't do notices and events as much. So here's the administration for children's services. These are those roll-ups. We've got their social media links. You also have, this is a new feature, a roll-up of all the information that we have from 25 data sets. So we've got 25 data sets that we've normalized that has the administration for children's services contained therein, which 77,000 records. And we can see a record count for each of these data sets which is fun. So like what looking at those data sets, there's notices. So basically we integrated the city record online into this. So everything related to the city record we have in here connected to their agency. We've got publications, required reports, data tracker, data assets. Some of these are Moda, Moda data sets. So we could see hopefully in the data tracker, uh, -oh, problems, I, I believe it. Okay. Well, when things are working fine, which, you know, is never always hundred percent. You can see all of their data assets. You can see all of their data track things, the required reports, hopefully, no, we don't have any of those publications. Maybe this is a bad, maybe this is a bad example for me to go through, but is what it is on finances. We've got expense budgets, discretionary funding related to the organization or related to the agency. So we can see in 2021, what were the city council discretionary budget items that this came up with this agency and also see it hopefully working on a map where all those points, et cetera, head counts, blah, blah, blah. You can see we basically, anything that has, that seems relevant to government operations that has an agency fields, like we pull in, we've got the green book in here. Okay. And we've got error. We've got the green book usually, although the green book sometimes presents problem. We've got, let's go to the civil list. And then we have things including like the civil list. This is basically all the people who work at the agency including their salary rate. This is all public information. We haven't gone deep into like building profiles for employees of the city government because yeah, at a certain point, public data connected together gets creepy. We're not trying to, we're not trying to cross the creepy threshold, but it is interesting how kind of the people elements, how the people elements work within the city. Another section, this is probably the section that's most popular is our capital project section and for this, the administration of children's services is not the most fun. Department of design and construction is better. They have a ton of capital projects and let's see this load up. Okay. And they've also got some notices, but yeah. So if we go to department design construction, there are three city data sets that were joined together to create this capital projects module. Here you can see we've got 900 projects, 900 projects. We've got $22 billion in costs, $15 billion over budget. So we're looking at 60 plus percent over budget of these projects. And we can see them on a map. We can sort them by the amount they are over budget, which is always fun and terrifying. And yeah, we can see them on a map. So if we wanted to say, okay, let's look at, let's find a project here. How does a garage rehabilitation get 19? 19,000% over budget, always fun to look. And so what we can do is we can see, all oh, right, I know, actually, I know this, I know this area. I know this street of garages. We can see that we had an, what was originally going to be Brooklyn number six garage was going to be a hundred thousand dollar projects. Now 19 million. We can see timeline information as reported by the related to it. And we can also see a change log of all the times this, this project has been changed. So a lot of these things have some issue around like scope creep, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's all here. We've also got things like mayor's agent agency management report. This is a fun one. So we can see when basically the five-year trends, whether things are positive or negative based on the mayor's management report, this is their performance indicators. You could take any one of these active construction projects ending early and on time. I don't know how that number can square with the capital budget portfolio as it is, but something that. Hopefully journalists and other people find interesting and want to investigate. So yeah, we've got more, we've got city community board requests for agencies. Some agencies don't receive those requests, but if there's community board requests, I think AST has some requests. Basically if a community board sends a request that gets filed, so here's a bunch of requests 
from community boards related to administration for children's services. And so that those are filed. You, as you can see, basically, if you keep collating, normalizing, collating organiz- data based on organization, you can really deliver a lot of information and uh, you can just keep continue to go down the list. So that is going back. So that's the organization section, capital projects. I showed you an organization view districts we can get into. There's more fun stuff all over the place. Um, we're only at 23 and I've been rolling. So let me talk a little bit about the city record because the city record is one of the most underappreciated and amazing things that like exists around. And when the city has to make information officially available, maybe there really aren't that many routes. The city does that. The primary one is definitely the city record. I wonder if, I wonder if Moda considers the open data portal as like a city record equivalent when it comes to like publishing, officially publishing stuff. But the, so the city record is the official journal. So it's like the federal register, every city, every government has, and it's where things have to, they, where things have to go to be like officially made public. And so the city releases this information as a PDF, as a website and as open data on the open data portal once a day. And so we took that open data version and began, and th- this has not been designed particularly extensively. But we've begun to collate that information with other information in the system. And so that these are the main, there are eight main headings in in the city record. So public hearings, procurement hearings, it's mostly hearings, contract award hearing or contract award announcements, agency rule changes, property disposition. So this is when the city sells stuff, court notices, changes in personnel, which should have some data in here, but it doesn't get updated as frequently as one would imagine sometimes. And hey, Devin, yep. uh, there's a question in the chat. How often is the data updated? I think they're referring all, to city record data. All city records every day. The transformer runs every day. Everything runs as soon as data sets updated, it triggers a transform. Now, agency names, things like agency names, if they, the data set might not always have, one day the data set might call Administration for Children's Services ACS. Another day it might say administration for children's services. Another day it might say that with a ca- a apostrophe S as opposed to an S. And so as that happens, we basically accumulate mapping to, we accumulate those mappings. So that can prevent a, that can prevent a triggered, that can prevent some of the data from being made available in the normalized fashion as one would hope, but we get a trigger when that, we get an alert when that happens. And so then it's a matter of just manually collating that. And we do automatically collate it when it makes sense. We haven't run that through a machine learning thing to make it smarter, but we do have all that data available to make it smarter. And at some point it would be, yes, I would like to make it make, do a little bit more AI. Cause then I could start saying IA, AI everywhere, which is what I've learned in the business world is key to presentations. So other things that we did once we uh, got the city record information, we made it available via RSS feed. It's also available via RSS feed on every on every agency page. So if you want an RSS feed of all of the uh, DCAS's, if you want an RSS feed or an events ICS feed of all of DCAS's city record, city record stuff, you could get that through the system. We basically use just the field analysis to say, okay, this is an event, this is an actual event. In, and so we, for events, we put them into ICS so you can stream them into your Google calendar for news, for not events, we put them into RSS and right. Those are available here and they're also available on the, on the pages of, on the pages of the agencies. If you want to get that focus, I think that actually is like pretty cool and useful. One of my favorite things. In fact, once I realized that we had been three years into this project, I was like, we probably just should have started with just RSS and, and ICS and city of city record. But anyway, so yeah, so these things click out and we're not trying to recreate all the data within the system. We're trying to make pointers so that things make sense. So yeah, so you can subscribe to these ICS feeds and it's fun. We also, once you're here, it's okay. What do we really want? What else is going on in the city? One of the things that's in the city record is auctions announcements, but those auctions are in different sites. There are a few different sites those auctions go up on. And so we scrape scrape those sites when we find them and put them here in an auction section i always thought a city website should be promoting its auctions so that they get bid up because the difference between selling this kawasaki for twenty four thousand dollars and thirty four thousand dollars probably a lot of marketing and that's just like straight cash to the city coffers which means hopefully less taxes yeah and so we have a little section of auctions where you can see so auctions based on source, although it looks like we're just doing future auctions right now and not all auctions, although that's it's a bit of an error. But we need constant use because there's so many different modules to, for people to complain about stuff so that we can catch all the little errors that emerge. But yeah, and so if 
I click on any one of these, let's see, I'm surprised changes in personnel doesn't have the data chip. Yeah. So yeah. So we've got changes in personnel. This is a really interesting data set. I mean, it's a live stream of basically all of the times people leave or are hired in the city, just sitting there and compacted into a strange field that needed to be unpacked to actually make it available as data. This is all in the city record. Yep. You can see, all, you can see a lot of information about what's going on in the city. Another source of just a ton of information that people have no idea about. And I didn't have any idea about until I really got into this, the civil service titles. And I know that the civil service title situation is one where is really people talk about it a lot as being a real problem for bringing innovation into government because the civil service title system, basically that I'll just read the, the text here, which is that New York City's government workforce is composed of people who hold these civil service titles. And these are the official descriptions of the work that city employees are supposed to be performing. And these titles are linked to position salaries or organizational charts and more. And so if those titles are not up to date, they're basically the job postings. They're basically the future job postings. And the, through those, that's how the city schedules how many employees should be at what place doing what. If these, if this core unit of thing is not up to date and making sense, then all of a sudden you're asking data professionals to take on titles that don't really make sense for them at salaries that are much lower than they should be in the market. And then you can't find a lot of data professionals to work and then you're in trouble. And so the city does not, anyone who navigates the civil service title situation in the city, it's abundantly clear that the city is not trying to make this information particularly available or appealing to people outside of a very specific scope. So there are like blogs that I've discovered, and I'm sure a lot of people know a lot about for talking to city employees. They're like blogs that are just like, how do you figure out what is going on in the civil service title? When are the civil service title tests? And right, these tests, these exams are the core of what define these civil service titles. Getting that information is literally the hardest information I've found probably like in the city ecosystem. It's actually, it's PDFs with codes. Those codes are not consistent and I can't join it. I literally, have, you can see I can join 30, I can join dozens and dozens of data sets together. But when it comes to actually like, when can people join the city workforce, which is basically like, when can people get past, take civil service tests? That's when information gets really hard to find and is locked away in PDFs with a bizarre codes. However, so if you wanted to look at the titles, so we did create this module. It's an interesting module. I'll, I like to use design. So let's say, let's say assistant urban designer. We can search, you can search these titles. There are five plus thousand of them, 3000 plus over 3000 of them. If someone wants to throw out a title, I could search that one. If not, I could just go into some, I'll, I'll just do design. Yes. Okay. So agency, which agencies are hiring what titles? Yes. That's a complicated, it's more complicated than it should be. It's possible. So let's go to just assistant urban designer here. Let's hope everything loads. Okay. Looks good. All right. So this is the assistant urban designer concept. If I wanted to find more information about what an assistant urban designer, it's not easy. This is where the exams become a key piece of that information. But like even just descriptive tests with what dis, a descriptive text of what an assistant urban designer means, like not readily available, or at least if you know where it is, like you let me know. So yeah, we can see. So we've got three data sets that this is connected to. This is positions, job postings, and the civil list. So when it comes to assistant urban designer, we can see that there are positions available or there are a lot of positions. This is not a positions available. These are positions that are budgeted for. So there are four, there's 10 scheduled positions at department of sitting planning with the UA name, personal services. So this is like counting an accounting title. You can see traffic operations. He's got five of them. You can see the kind of variation in salaries between them. And you can also see the total annual spend that the city has on this lot, on this position at that agency with that title of the civil service title, with that UA name of the civil service title. Okay. When now, if you want to find job postings, you can see that there, are, this is where you see open jobs related to this, this concept. However, for it's a complicated join to bring the agency into this. It's not sitting in open data in a simple format, in a simple format as you might expect. And I don't really know why that is, but why that join is complicated, but some, for some reason it is. Okay. And so this is showing you positions that are available. If you click on this, it goes to the city job website, which I'm sure everyone loves. And, and then we've got the civil list. So then we can see all of the people who actually, who actually have this title. 
based on a calendar year. So if you know any urban designers, you can find out their salary and if it's, or rather not their salary, but rather their salary rate, because that's different than actual, actual take home. So the title thing I think is really interesting because as a tech person, I know I've got friends who work in city tech and work in tech around the city. There's a constant kind of like a mismatch between what the civil service title is and the job that needs to get done, particularly in like cutting edge tech stuff or maybe cutting edge isn't the right term, the type of like industry specific tech work. And so bringing attention to these civil service titles and like figuring out how to reform them, how to improve them, whatever, is always interesting. Also interesting is one of the organizations that's thinking about organizations that are tangentially related to the city that aren't city agencies are these bargaining units and the unions. And that's a whole other kind of universe of stuff that I've had the pleasure of learning about through this project, which is that unions aren't the same as bargaining unit and it's, it just gets more and more complicated. But if you wanted to look at one way to sort through what's going on in the city from a civil service title perspective is to do it through the unions. So you've got correction captains, you can find correction captains, but all of the, but that, and that's like a small, that's a small group of folks and corrections has been something that people have been talking a lot about recently. And so we can see, we can get into breakdowns of what is going on with, with basically like by, at the bargaining unit level. And if I click on a bargaining unit, we actually have, we have profiles for these organizations. We, yes, we did look for them on Google and make links, like post links here and you can go to their Facebook page if you want to. Similarly, or rather in an opposite direction, District Council 9 has, or actually maybe DC 37, has a ton, 839 positions that they have, including, if I recall, I recall, I, it, and this is where things get a little bit weird, which is that, okay, you've got beauticians, people, with title code of a beautician it, and a maximum salary here that are in the 30,000s, but then you've got a bunch of salary rates of people that are, is extremely high. And if I recall, I looked into one of these or two of these, and one of them was the CTO of, or maybe not the CTO, maybe the, C, the chief budget officer of the MTA. And so then you see something like that and it's okay, I screwed up somewhere. And so then I, I go through and look at the data and that's like, actually, I didn't screw up somewhere. Like in the open data, it screwed up. So then it's like, okay, what do we do now? If, and I've, I've gone through a lot of these and this was a rare one, but it's okay. So if the open data is saying this person is, is of this title code and they're making this much money and they're on LinkedIn as the head of a large MTA division, does that mean we need to do something about something or what? And I leave that up to y'all to think about, but it is, it is real. And it's the type of thing that I'm through these types of interfaces and why I get excited about the, this project and this concept, which does not look like SimCity now, but I can assure you is slowly moving closer to Tim's SimCity concept is, is that uh, unless you have these types of profile in like these types of interfaces, things like that become, they don't, they're harder to find, they're harder to browse, just browse and find. You could do like a bunch of data analysis to find it. But then if you do a bunch of data analysis to find it, it's not really a compelling narrative, but the narrative of being able to look through the stuff in a way that I think most people can, can click around and understand, I think delivers, delivers a more interesting and compelling concept. And I want to leave time for talk and question and answers. I'll just give, okay. Yeah. We'll talk about districts. So districts is cool. Districts is a cool section. It, I think we need to upgrade the tech one, one degree, which is cap we're capable of doing what we should do. But so district data is, is not in the, from an open data portal perspective, a lot of district data, geolocation data is not traditional geo data. It's information such as what is happening at the city council district. So we can look at a city council district and then we can click on it and then we can see, okay, what data has city council districts in it? And so this is, you know, City Council District 33. And so what are the data sets? City Council discretionary funding related to this district. Prod capital projects, community board requests and facilities. So this is the data that is not points on a map in the city data universe, but rather a field that says 33 council district header 33 entry. And so we've created polygons, polygon filters for council districts, community <laughs> districts and neighborhood tabulation areas that you can click and you can go in and you can start seeing stuff. These all like yeah. There's a couple of things in the chat I wanted to call to your attention. Yeah. One that's relevant to what's on the screen now 
it looks like the council member info is out of date. Where is that info being pulled from? Council member info is, yeah, probably out of date. Where yeah. Council member info is not a open. This is a manual. This is manual. This is, yeah, manual, manual entry. So I've got it go through and update that. Okay. Office of the comptroller also appears to be out of date. And then I think I saw you term any elected. So if you want, so basically any elected official operates as a organization in the data set, rather, let me put it this way. There's elected positions. If we go back, there are elected officials are, yeah, they have to be, they are basically treated as organizations and organizations. So what I was saying earlier about how the system works, which is it's a useful time to go deeper into it is that we basically, we have a, let me bring it up for you. Oh gosh, it's amazing how these zoom screens are always just in the wrong place. Okay. So here it is. So when we do this normalization, what we have to do, so this is the index that I was talking about. This is all the data sets that we normalize, but then we have to normalize against these index, these UIDs that we create. And so the UIDs that we create are, we basically have, we have to do that and we do it manually. We establish them once and then they keep on going. So we've got a thousand plus organizations that we're normalizing against. And this is where this is manual data. We see a new agency or a new organization or a union, or even have like political consulting groups from the city and state top, whatever 75 most powerful. So that means we have to create a record for them. We have to establish an ID for them which we modeled off of EIN numbers because I don't know, I was thinking too much about it and there are no EIN numbers that start with 17. So basically we model them off of EIN and, and yeah, and then we do, we can do data collection around their phone numbers and their Facebook pages and their logos and whatever. There was a time when we were integrating in the beginning, when we were integrating with administrative rules and charter stuff, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, so basically all of these, this stuff needs to be updated, man. And so when things, we just had a big yeah, change of a big change of who does what, where, and yeah, we've got to go in and we've got to edit that stuff manually. Similarly, we have council districts, community districts, NTAs. These are where all of our, our, our this is what, this is the air table that holds our, like our grand index. Interestingly, if you find this stuff interesting, this is also the air table is the air table is not, it's not really the guts. The air table is like the, uh, it's the routing table of the system. So this, the key is that this ID number will get something like in a data set. So we have the data sets here. So the data sets are coming in and we're looking at these data sets and we're saying, okay, at the office of the comptroller, sometimes it's called in that data set. Sometimes it's called office of the comptroller spelled out like this. Oftentimes, sometimes it's called OOC in that data set for that record. Sometimes it's comptroller, sometimes it's NYC comptroller. We're seeing that in our transformer tool, which I should probably bring up. We basically see a printout of all of, of these things of whatever identifier is used for the office of the comptroller. And we're going in, we're selecting, okay, this is actually called office of the comptroller. And that means that in the new data set that we publish, that we republish this open, when we republish this open data, we add a column of called like org UID and it's going to have this number on it. And because it has this ID number on it, that means that it's connected to all the other columns, all the other rows with that org number, no matter what data set they came in. And so this is that central normalization table. And this is what this kind of concept, I think is what I would love to not do. I would love for Moda to do this or some other city agency to do, which is establish, you know, take the data as the agency and publish the data as the agencies have it but then also publish a version that's normalized where you don't change any of the data. You're just adding a few normalization columns so that we can basically build like complicated apps in and around it. And so that to me should happen around org and city council district and community district and NTA, as well as capital project info. Let's so, talk about elected officials for a second, because one yeah. of the questions in chat did ask who updates this stuff. And I think from your conversation, you're doing that yourself, right? Yeah, there aren't that many elected officials. And so let's see here. So like our actually, and city councilors are a weird group because their offices don't have, their offices almost don't, like basically don't exist in open data beyond like their district exists in open data. But they're there. They don't have budgets at an individual office level that is shared in the open data. They don't have even like Green Book doesn't have like their staff. They're not really they're not really like a strong entity in that regard. 
it's better to look like things like the mayor's office or the public advocate, which have budget items and expenses delineated out are more appropriate type. And in fact, now that I'm remembering how the city council works, yeah, there is a data set. We, I think, no, I think we made, we made a custom, the like a year last year of the city council people to get that, create this district view. Either we created it or I'm pretty sure we created it. Basically it exists outside of the normal approach, which creates, which creates a challenge, but not something that's super hard, but it's something that requires. I know this looks like a lot of work and I can tell you, boy, this has definitely been a lot of work, but it also is a set it and forget it system. And so it's easy to just forget it for a while, but like this is coming from yeah, a simple spreadsheet that either we upload, that we upload it once and that was a more, maybe a better more impressive version, although similarly is the community districts, which are rep have linked to the community board and also linked to population fact finders, community district, but community boards also are weird and I guess narrowing currently are also strange entities. Um, but they show up a lot more in city data as like community district, whatever community board seven Manhattan with budget items and stuff attached to them but not all at the same level, which when you start going through the data at this level, you start seeing like all these significant inconsistencies around who's uploading data and where, what data is coming out of what community boards, et cetera, who's some community boards aren't even up. Their data is not even getting into these like community board request things. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying well. So yeah, errors are introducing the normalization process. This is a volunteer project. So like I sit there and I look at a, some type of agency acronym and I spend enough time to think I know what I did, but not so much, but we don't change any of the underlying data. We only add data. So you're not going to see any data. You might see misappro misassigned data every now and then, but the content of that data is not changed and so is what it is. And also, you can also search, which is fun. Hopefully this works. Let me see. You can also search there and you can find your, uh, community district your council district, your neighborhood tabulation area, and it'll filter to give that to you as well as various other district info. So yeah, so, right. So yeah, elected officials, we need, we certainly need to update, we need to do a round of updates around this. Checkbook is you know, another great data source that I know that people discuss. Also not normalized. The API is old, although I think they updated, maybe they updated the API recently, but checkbook, integrating checkbook into this type of system having it normalized and having the API like readily available would be like extremely cool and something that I think is very interesting. Another th interesting fact or thing about checkbook is that our capital budget, which is not to be mean, but like probably the laughing stock of the developed world when it comes to just like how much we spend on stuff and how little we get, we're spending five times more per mile of rail than Paris, France, Paris, France is like completely euthanized and blah, blah, blah. But our capital budget, capital budget items like this to me is like the key, one of the key UIDs that does not exist. So we got project IDs that come from certain reporting systems, but if you look for those project IDs within things like checkbook, they're different or they're much, they're greatly extended. So there might be, they might add content, add identifiers to the front of that ID and add identifiers to the back of that ID or add or not have a P here. It would take a significant technical effort to collate in an, in an, in a automated way, project IDs that are coming out of, so where does this, where is this data set coming from, from this capital project detailed data. So all that, all this data is also cited and linked back to, so yeah, the OMB is OMB, basically this data set from OMB linking that to linking that to checkbook data would be amazing and something that's not currently being done at least in the public and from what I've heard, not in the government either really, and would, uh, it would be revolutionary in terms of like capital budget reporting, because what OMB is putting out there about things like some of this stuff, some of this stuff makes no sense. And I'm not saying it, it makes no sense from a reporting perspective because of the way they divide up scope, project scopes and stuff, but I don't even want to click it all. Well, but if we look at citywide construction, pavement reconstruction, okay, so this is a citywide concept. You know, it started off as a thousand dollars. So this is clearly like a non item. Really, this is like a, a $1,000 item that someone put into the, to a budget for OMB and then blew it up into 4.7 million. And so, okay, we can see in this timeline, which comes in OMB data, some information about what phase it's allegedly in, but what we really need to know is let me see all the checks related to this item, because that's going to tell me in a real way, like what phase this is in, not what OMB decides to report. And so. 
Long story, I, when I embarked on this project, I really did it just because I was curious to see if I could begin to try to make sense of what's going on in the city. And now that I've gone through it for a few years, I definitely think it's, I think it's possible for us to develop like a real city, stem city level understanding of the city. Like it's definitely possible. It's a hundred plus agencies, but it's not 300 plus agencies and it's a lot of money, but it's not an infinite amount of money. It's a lot of capital projects, but these are numbers that are big, but they're not, they're not obscenely huge. They are like understandable. And if the intention were there for the gov by the city government to actually make all of this information available to the public in an organized manner, like it could be done. I've pursued this effort to show that it can be done even without basically on the fumes of my business's revenue and a lot of my like interest and effort, but hundred percent, we could have, you could be connecting all this data in real time and delivering information dashboards. And if the city doesn't do it more, the city just gives open data. That's fine because we can do it ourselves independently, but it'd be cool if the city wanted to do it because I'm tired. Yeah. And so that's basically happy to talk, take more questions. I can tell you at the future, definitely interested. Oh, let me give one last bit. Unless they throw up a question in there or else I'm going to go to the last bit, which is there's the partic participation angle and the city had through the civic engagement commission done something which is reasonable, which is participate.nyc.gov. It's the deployment of an open source software program called the CDIM, which was came out of Barcelona, which is good piece of rail software, perfectly reasonable. The city is not using it to even close to its capability, which is too bad. And so we have a, we have a version of it here that people can play with if they want to and see a bit more of what the city could be doing with, with their decedent. So this is the same software that, this is the same software, the same core software as participate, participate, doesn't participate. Does I thought it was, let me see here, pull it up. Yeah. So this is the same software as this. I showed you the Barcelona's version of this, you would say, wow, they can, you can run. Like, I don't want the city to fall too far behind. They are participation platforms like this, CEDEM, which is in Barcelona, where they're doing like integrated participatory budgeting and city planning, land use review and event calendars and blah, 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 blah. Up and down the line, it's a really, it's really impressive. And they have, I don't know, maybe a few hundred thousand users. Madrid has a different, also Rails, also open source program called, called, called Consul that does like hundreds of thousands of users interacting, giving feedback to the city in an organized manner. Basically we're just falling behind, not we're falling behind in, in the participation side and it's a shame. Okay. Yeah. So I think there isn't any more time, although if people have questions, I will talk to them. Uh, questions in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Journalists, some journalists use this. We won some award for plan it is in for a good city planning website, but honestly it's the users are the problem. Like people haven't seen data presented like this and they don't know what to do with it. I'm not an academic. I'm not spending my time pitching to academics to incorporate this into the education materials. I would love to, I would, I'm all for it and I'd support it. I'm just, I'm really not a marketing guy, which makes all this stuff kind of difficult. I'm more of a scratch my itch person and hopefully actions lead to more actions. But yeah, I pitched it to journalists Some journalists find it interesting. They've written, I've got, there's been an article or two written about the capital budget written that references the site and like uses some of the top level analysis. I've run a small internship program where we had journalism or like high school kid go through the capital budget, find projects, take pictures of what was going on and bring it back. It would definitely need to expand to make sense and be like, but I think it's interesting. I think it would be great for journalism students and journalists. I think it would be great for people in the real estate industry already have a bunch of intelligence tools, basically journalists and academics at this point and government people. I've had government people come and tell me that they couldn't find information over their government system. So they came here to look up information. That's always something I love to hear. So this is like a alternative tool for government. People finding information would be probably my favorite thing to, to know about and to hear that, that when I hear that, when I hear that hints of that, I'm, I get really excited. And so I'm happy to offer that role. And if people have any insights or intel or ideas for how to improve the thing, I'm here all for it. Honestly, any users just going through it and making sure all the data sets are connected. Sometimes we get errors. It means small things are very fixable came up. And also this data is all available via Cardo API. And we're about to release like a proper API that has access control. So people could make apps on top of that more simply and easily. So I would love to hear about that. If anyone wants to connect with me about this thing, I know we're two minutes over time. They can. Here's my contact info. 
Devin at Serapis. I'm on Twitter. Happy to, and we're open for anything. We're open for people to contribute really anything. It's an open source project with an open source spirit. And I'll just plug that we also, through our work, we work in association with and support some other projects that are cool. Civic Tech Guy, which is a global thing, reported app where people can document malfeasance on the streets by cars. And then we've got some other stuff for the community. Yeah. Mutual Aid NYC, Resource Bank, and Copic.NYC. And one day I would love to do, I'd love to present this work to a COVID, a Commission on Public Information and Communications Committee that is restarted because it hasn't been around for years. And it's actually seems like a great committee. But we have the archived website there, which that website got taken down for political reasons, I think. Thanks so much for having me. Huge fan of open data, made all of this possible. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all in the open dataverse uh, and in reality also at some point. So thanks. Thank you.